What's up everybody, Liam Clistrom here for another eye-popping Redshift walkthrough. Today I'm going to walk you through how to get through Redshift in Cinema 4D with volumetric lighting and God rays. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's jump into Cinema 4D and take a look at our render settings to begin with. First, under Redshift, I've gone in and I've cranked my samples up to 16 here. I've really cranked them up. I know it's a huge number. And then under Max, just 128. And that's to combat the fact that volumetric lighting can get noisy pretty easily. I've also turned off my Force Enable IPR. That's just because I want the IPR to match what my final product's going to look like. Under global illumination, I've turned on brute force for both. And then under integration, I've just turned off that default light. To begin, I'm gonna start by building a floor. I'm gonna use a plane because cinema, or Redshift won't see the Cinema 4D default floor. And we're gonna make this something ridiculous like 5,000 by 5,000. And I've already got a camera in my scene and I think I've got it exactly where I want. So we'll just keep that there. And I'm gonna bring in this cool giant that I got off Sketchfab and bring him in the scene. And it looks like there might be some geometry added on there. And we're pretty much ready to go. We've got a floor, we've got our model, and we've got our camera. So if I hit play, Redshift will start up. And because we don't have any lights in the scene, we're not gonna see anything. So let's throw a light in here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a spotlight. And I'm gonna throw a target tag on here to make life a little easier and aim it right at our giant there and bring this up and over a bit. Come in here, bring it up a little more, kind of come off to the side, maybe back. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm liking how that's lighting our guy. Turn this on and you'll see we've got our lighting but we don't have any of that cool volumetric feel yet. And that's really just a couple clicks away. So first thing we wanna do is under our light, go under volume and under contribution scale, that's gonna say how much this light should contribute to how much of the volume we're seeing. I'm gonna turn that to say 0.5 at the moment and bring our samples up to 64 for the volume. As I said, volumetrics can get a little bit noisy pretty easily. So just go ahead and combat that before we even get started by throwing some samples in there. And the fastest way to get volumes is just hit Redshift Environment. And boom, that's all volumetric fog lighting. And what's happening is our scattering, even though it's only at 0.1, is just too high. So I'm gonna combat that by throwing in a zero and you'll see we start to get that volumetric light and those God rays coming in. Um, but I think it's just a little too strong still. So what you can do is adjust the phase and what's gonna happen is it's gonna tell Redshift to either go from the foreground to the background and start phasing out the, the volumetrics or from the background to the foreground. I'm gonna go in this direction and that's a little too much right about there. So we've got a little bit in the foreground and still a lot remaining in the background. I can probably even get away with bringing our scattering back up to like 0.5 and adjusting this back down some more. Yeah, I'm liking how that's going. It's a little too black and white plain Jane for me though. So under my light, I'm gonna add in some cool color with this blue and that's a little too strong. Maybe let's try like 8%, about half. Yeah, there we go. And uh, we're, we're looking pretty good, but it could go further. And the way we're going to start doing that is by adding in some materials and then adjusting our lights and adding a cloner to break up the lighting even more. So I'm going to start with just the default redshift material, name this iron. And I'm going to actually use the preset iron for this. It's an iron giant. So we can use iron, throw that on there really quickly, get some nice looking iron. And I'm gonna throw the BRDF to GGX at the moment. That's just how it interpolates it. Uh, I usually like GGX, but it's not working as well for me. It gets a little too rounded in the lighting. I like having the contrast here, the way iron should look. And the roughness, I'm gonna bring up to 
0.5, just a little bit more, get a little bit more wrap of those shadows around the edges there on the con contour uh, intersections. So for the floor, I like having a glass floor. It gives a little bit of reflection of the object plus um, kind of makes it look like it's in a, a car commercial. So we're going to throw a glass preset on there. I'm going to up the samples to 32 here, make this 0.125, just a slight bit of roughness going in, get a little bit of blur in there. And now we're really starting to have our scene come together. You can even see back here that the volumetric lighting is reflecting off the glass too. It kind of gives us hazy feel, which I really like. But we can take this even further. And the way we're going to do that is by dividing up the light and really giving some god rays to the scene. I'm going to throw a capsule in here, and that's obviously too huge. I'm going to bring it down to about 0.5 and maybe mm, 10. 10 should do it. Let's look, take a look at this guy. It's looking good. And because we're going to want it sitting this way, I'm going to put it on the Z orientation and go ahead and throw this into a cloner. And in the cloner, we're going to make a grid. And that grid isn't going to have any on the Y. It's probably going to have about 50 on the X and maybe 20 this way. And you can see it's starting to lay out on the floor here, but we're going to have to put it into the air. I think we can probably do like 250 here by 300. Spread those out, bring that in the air, and you'll see in a second as this lifts up, it starts to divide the rays a bit more. And make sure our light is really getting over that grid a bit more. Come over here. Go back into this. There you go. Now you can see those lights are really getting divided up. But I'm not really liking that we have this harsh shadow on the face, so I'm going to duplicate this light come in here, bring it over here, get get some more light on our giant's face, and I'm actually going to just warm this one up, have some nice juxtaposition between the two. But man, that is bright, so let's bring this down quite a bit. And you know what, I'm going to even bring this one down some, let's see what we can get going on there. Huh, why am I getting that reflection in the back there? That shouldn't be happening so much. Um, I didn't move the light there. Let's move this off to the side a little bit more. See if I can combat that. That's a strange reflection that's happening. Man, that is like really scattering. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this a bit more. Not really liking that. Maybe maybe if I go the other way, I can combat that. That's starting to help. I guess it's because I was going from um, foreground to background and getting rid of the fog that way. So I need to do the reverse, start bringing this in a little bit more, maybe even a tad more. There we go. And let's see if I bring my light back where it was, get some more on the face. Really need to lock this. There we go. There, now we're starting to see the lighting exactly how I anticipated it. Um, we can probably even bring this up to like 75. Now, whoop, extra zero in there, 75. Good. So now, because of this grid up here that we've made with our cloner, we've got these nice divides in our god rays got a little bit of a fill light coming in from this spotlight here with our warm light and I'm, I think I'm gonna crank this one up just a little bit too, say 65 and bring this down a little bit tighter now you can see it's really putting a sharp edge on our ray there if I move this this way some might even get over the top a little bit more get up in the air there we go I'm liking how that's coming together looking pretty cinematic might even go into like a super wide lens here 
make our giant feel extra tall. Come in, kind of get low. There we go. Now we're starting to get some really nice dramatic lighting. Losing a little detail on the face there, which is okay. And that's pretty much it. And it doesn't affect your render times very much. So let's go ahead and hit Shift R. I'm running three 980 Ti's, not the latest and greatest, but you're gonna see it's only gonna be a few seconds. So right now we're at 10, probably we're finished around 12. Yep, right, right about there. And it looks good, not too much noise coming in. Of course, you can crank up the samples if you're going up to like a 4K resolution. This is only 1920 by 1080. But even if I just pull in on that, that looks pretty good with minimal effort. So if you're looking to add some dramatics to your scenes, really making it feel a little bit more filmic, very easy with Redshift. Just throw in a couple lights, make sure you've got your volume settings under control, so up your contribution, make sure you've got samples, throw in your environment, start messing with your scattering and your phase. Um, you can control the height of the fog through this here and then your uh, intuition. So really customizable in just a few minutes. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the feedback on the last tutorial. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below or find me on Twitter at underscore 531. And I think the next video I'm gonna do is an AOV multi-pass overview. Um, I started messing with it last night, but I didn't like how it came out, so I threw together this one. Um, but if there's anything you guys wanna see in particular with AOVs, definitely let me know. Maybe I can go through how to take it out of Redshift and bring it into Fusion or After Effects and start compositing it together. Or if you like doing stills and dailies, then I can bring it into Photoshop as well. All right, guys, thanks so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Prograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Prograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in an HDR studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny, all right. I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you gotta make stuff that you're not gonna put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. The podcast and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Aryev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hassenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammer, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omotola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimps, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials.
pretty good, I guess. 